Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking on my 55 gallon worm bin blue. Today this is going to be a complete fluff, evaluate, and feed. So you will get to see the whole process from beginning to end. Now today uh, we are going to look in on the finished part and the foraging part. And then lastly we're going to look in on the active feeding end. I'm not looking to actually do a harvest today, but what we are going to do is move the wedge over and give us some new room in order to keep the feeding zone active. All right, so I'm just going to yammer on about the wedge system while I work. So from this piece of tape here, or this line here, is what I consider to be the finished castings that are um, sort of in a... I don't know what you want to call it, kind of a curing stage. Um, it's, it's what happens right before I go to sift them and harvest them. Right now I'm trying to keep the moisture up a little bit so that the microbes stay healthy before, you know, until I'm ready to harvest. So I am going to kind of go down deep and make sure that there's, you know, no spots down low that are too wet that might be going anaerobic. Now I think we've been Last time we were in here was about 20 days ago, but we did not do um, a deep dive or a fluff. So I need to make sure that, you know, nothing's getting anaerobic down low. And then I also need to move this completed part over and make room to add more food at the other end. So far, everything is looking great. It's not a sifftable moisture right now, but that's not the goal. I've... Uh, Got a new birdies bed, raised bed, that I'm going to install this week sometime. And then I will go, I'm going to need some more castings as a top layer for my raised bed. Alright, so that all looks really good there. We'll move down to that, this part here, which wasn't completely covered by the tarp, but it is, uh, it is getting to that completion phase. So we need to start making sure that everything is homogenous and that nothing gets anaerobic. Make sure if there's any trapped gases or anything in here that it has a chance to get going. Not only that, but because this part is getting closer to finished, and as you can see, there's, hard, there's no worms in here. As soon as I say that, I'll find one. But for the most part, there's no worms. See? Right there. Oops. Wherever he went. I just saw a worm. And so we're going to keep moving this part down so that it has a chance to cure as the worms move out. So that's part of the wedge system is that you're continuously moving material that you're not feeding anymore over so the worms have a chance to depopulate the area and the castings can start drying out and getting to a siftable level. Yeah, I mean, there really aren't very many worms in here. They really are leaving. So, the worms do what they want. So, if they want to get out of this area, then it must not be, you know, worth it anymore to them. Okay, so we're getting close to the edge of the migration zone here. We might start seeing more worms. And we also might start seeing a little bit more moisture. Because this area has not been... I haven't attempted to dry this out or anything. So this will be the first time that this portion moves down to this zone. And then as we go to the next part that's still covered up, then we are going to see if there's anything that's ready to move over to this vacancy. You know, we've created almost, you know, a foot of vacancy here. And so I'm assuming, shouldn't assume, but I'm guessing that the worms will be ready to move over to this, this area here. Take off the tarp. Our divider line has been annihilated. But that's okay. They got to eat something that makes them happy. And if they're happy, I'm happy. Right? Good worms. So as I'm moving over this in-process stuff, we'll just kind of take a look at things. This is a mango seed with all the worms happily eating inside of that. And then, so this would not have been fed 
maybe about a month ago. No, not a month ago, more like two months ago. So you can see there's a lot of worms in here. I'll keep kicking the unfinished stuff down to the end. But just looking, looking at this stuff, you can tell it doesn't look a lot different than the items that we just moved over, other than the fact that it's a little bit wetter and it is also, um, you know, densely populated with worms. But now that we're moving them over, they will very likely start to leave this area in favor of a, you know, a wetter, more densely, uh, you know, populated with food. Sure. Some stickers or something there. So we're just going to keep moving it. Oh, egg. Cork. I mean, you figure wine lasts for like a hundred years, right? So I don't know when I think that cork is going to go away. <laughs> oh, okay. You can tell it is kind of heavy. I'm straining here that this is kind of taxing my muscles. Or lack of, as the case may be. All right. So that's good. We've got this part that is the new forging part. I think that's enough for that. Now we will move on to the active feeding zone, and I will move the camera over. All right, continuing on with the wedge here, we're going to start fluffing. And we do have a storm moving in here, so the worms are crawling on the top a little bit more than usual. But I just wanted to ask, so if you, if, if space and time and money and your family's ability to put up with your worm hobby was not a problem. What kind of worm bins would you have? What kind of worms would you have? I think that, you know, if I, if I was retired or whatever, I just might go through and, and put this type of bin like going all the way around the basement. I wouldn't have the time. I'd have to start some sort of a waste pickup business to feed them because there's about 20 pounds of my red wiggler blue worm European nightcrawler mix in here. And I think if I had many, many of these, you know, like five or six of them, I'd have to start taking donations for, for food. I mean, right now, I don't really, at my stage of my life, you know, I'm probably 10 to 15 years from retirement, so I'm nowhere near ready to, you know, take on my retirement project. But that, I mean, honestly, that would be the, the ideal dream at, you know, to retire and, and basically save the world from garbage professionally instead of just as a hobby on YouTube. So we're seeing all the tomato skins. They do take forever to break down. But this is looking good. It's staying a really good moisture and for that I am grateful. Those little tarp things are working fabulously. Okay, we're getting closer and you can see that the worms have been making castings right on the top. Good worms. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing the flipping and moving the harder, you know, slower items over so that they have a greater population of worms and maybe some good goodies to entice the worms to work on them again. Don't know. Oh, this is a another avocado. Kind of like a horse chestnut or a water chestnut or whatever you call it. It's weird how they break down. They do eventually. It takes, you know, four or six months. But when they do get into it, this is what they look like. Good worms. All right, so keeping going here, you can tell the paper bedding has definitely been worked over here. But as leaf season is coming, the worms are going to get a treat today. Um, it is the first influx of leaves. Uh, for the season. I live across from the park, so the influx will not stop until the snow covers them. Um, we just have lots of, I mean, I have maples and oak and, and everything in my yard, but the park has all kinds of leaves, so I end up with every kind of leaf imaginable. And some people have asked, do walnut leaves create a problem? I mean, I know that there is a compound in uh, walnut leaves that purposefully is like an herbicide 
but uh, I don't think I have enough of them in a high enough concentration that I've ever noticed a problem. Um, so if you have noticed a problem with, uh, you know, walnut leaves, go ahead and put that in the comments below and, and let everybody know what your experience is. Okay, we're getting down to the part that has been the most recently fed. And if we're lucky, we'll get a worm ball. See? Mm, no. Looks like they're growing me a bunch of melons. And all the way down to the bottom here. Still not seen a proper worm ball. I suppose I can't, can't get that every time. I mean, that would be spoiling me. Too high of expectations, etc. So good, good high concentration of worms here down at the bottom. But we are about ready to have storms in the next couple of days, so it is possible that they're kind of out of sorts. I did grab a picture earlier today where the worms were crawling the walls of blue. And um, to just show you that I don't have any worm jerky on the outside of blue, but it's not outside the realm of uh, possibility that they would try to escape you know, when they are disturbed. Blue worms do, in my personal experience here, blue worms do tend to freak out um, in heavy thunderstorms and, and the like. People that live in Florida, if you have blue worms, put their, you know, whoever lives near a, a tropical area where that gets cyclones or the like, uh, let me know, you know, do you have more problems with your worms during that time? I would be interested to hear about it. All right, so here we go. We've moved the wedge. This is now, they ate the wedge indicator, but here is the wedge active in, and here is foraging. So we've, we've created some real estate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them, I'm going to get them some leaf bedding. I've been soaking it in water just so that it's, Leaves kind of don't, I think, naturally, you know, stay wet for very long if they're not submerged in water. It smells so good. It smells like a forest. I think my husband also may have ran over some mint or one of the herbs. <laughs> so maybe that's also why it smells really good. We're going to put that down as the, the base of the feeding they're going to get a bag of kitchen scraps. Then they're going to get some unripe pumpkin. It's funny how they look like uh, watermelons when they're not ripe. Now, let's see, what else have I got? So on the opposite end of the scale, this was supposed to get fed last week and didn't, and I forgot and left it out. It's weird, there's really not a lot of bugs on it like you think it would. But uh, that's going to go in there. I imagine that will be super fast food. Partially decomposing pumpkin. Pumpkin that's not ripe, and then kitchen scraps. Okay, I've got some eggshell that I can give them. And then they'll get another three-gallon bucket of the, the leaves. It does have a little bit of paper in there because it was in the same container. But I think that will do them up for the next couple of weeks until I get in here again. If you want to see more videos about blue from the beginning, I have a playlist I will link right over here. And YouTube, of course, thinks if you've already seen that, you're going to want to watch this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.